Hello there and welcome to A-Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at composite Maclaurin series functions so we can answer questions from exercise 2D. So this is a clever use of the formula booklet in answering Maclaurin series questions. So what do we know from the formula booklet? We know we have e to the x, e to the x equals 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial etc etc. That's valid for all values of x. We have ln 1 plus x, that was done in the last video, we worked that out previously. Sin x, we've, well, we saw Maclaurin work that out for himself in the last video. Cos x as well is the complementary one to sine, where it's the odd powers um, rather than the, so the odd, even powers rather than the odd powers. Um, and then we have 1 plus x to the n. Um, which is actually, that's not a Maclaurin series formula, although you can prove it by the Maclaurin series expansion, but that's actually rather the binomial expansion formula um, that's in the A-level part of the section of the formula booklet rather than the further math. So don't forget that you do have this available to you, uh, the um, binomial expansion, as well as any of these Maclaurin series formula. And you also get arctan, I think, but I've never really used arctan, but you do get it in the formula booklet. So what we're now going to use is we're going to use the um, cos x Maclaurin series expansion to answer the question for writing down the first four non-zero terms in the series expansion of cos 2x squared. So we're going to replace x with 2x squared, basically. So start by writing out the cos x expansion, then just replace any x term with 2x squared, and then just make sure you've expanded the brackets correctly and you've got the answer correct. You could really go through the process of differentiating, oh, that would be much longer. It's, uh, it's easy to do composite functions of Maclaurin series functions. So write out the cos x and then just replace x with 2x squared in every single position. So all the x's on the top row from the formula booklet will be replaced with 2x squared because that's the question that we are asked. And let's now just be very careful and expand the brackets very carefully and simplify our final answer. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. So you don't need to go through the whole process of differentiating, putting in zero, differentiating, putting in zero, differentiating, putting in zero. Um, if you have something from the formula book that you can use and it's just a slight edit of that, then you're very welcome to do uh, that slight edit. Let's do another one then. Oh, this one's complicated. Learn brackets, the square root of 1 plus 2x over 1 minus 3x. A classic exam question, this one actually, because what we have to do first is we have to get it into this form up above so that we can use this Maclaurin series expansion, but it's not currently like that. But we can turn it into something that looks like this just by using the laws of logs. Remember that division can be split up by a subtraction of two logs, and any powers inside a logarithm can be factorized or, or moved to the front as uh, coefficients. So that half will now simply move to the front. So you can see what we've got here now. We've got this expression here and this expression here where we can use this formula up above and then we'll just do half of the first expression minus the second expression. So let's now go ahead and do that. So for the first one then, ln 1 plus 2x. So what's different between ln 1 plus 2x and what we have in the formula booklet? Well, it's just that there's a 2 in front of the x. So what I'll do is in the formula booklet, I'll put a 2 in front of every single x value. So it becomes ln 1 plus 2x. But remember, it's not just going to be a 2 in front of every x because it's a we're effectively substituting x with 2x. So 2x needs to go inside all of the squared, cubing, and to the power 4 that we have for this function. Don't just put a 2 in front of all of them. Think of it as replacing x with 2x. And then we can work each of these out individually. So it's going to give us 2x minus 2x squared plus 8 over 3x cubed plus, so minus 4x to the 4. Uh, but remember, for this expression, it needs to be half of the ln 1 plus 2x. So we'll half everything now while we're here, because they're all pretty much even numbers. That'll make it an easy process. So there we are. That's the first part. 
Let's now move on to the second part. It's ln 1 minus 3x. And in this case, we're going to be replacing x with minus 3x. So each x in the formula booklet formula for ln 1 plus x will turn into minus 3x. So expand the brackets and work that out really nice and carefully. Make sure you expand the brackets properly. The double negatives, triple negatives, four, four negatives. Make sure you're really careful with this stage and we get this expression here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the first expression and take it away, uh, take the second expression away from it. So first expression, take away second expression. And be really careful when you expand the brackets here. You've got lots of double negatives happening here. So be really careful when you do this expression, take away the next expression. And eventually when you simplify everything and tidy everything up, the first one, x minus minus 3x, that'll make it 4x, minus x squared plus 9x squared over 2, that'll be plus 7 over 2x squared. The next one will be 4 over 3, add 9, which will make it 31 over 3. And the last one will be minus 2, add 81 over 4 which will make it 83 over 4x to the 4. Lovely, so there we are. That's how you can split up a ln1. Uh, it's just use the laws of, laws of logs to split it up and then use this expression at the top here. Moving on to the next question, given that the terms in x to the n, where n is greater than 4, can be ignored, show that using the series of expansions for e to the x and sine x, that e to the sine x is approximately 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 minus x4 over 8. The series would carry on for infinity, but we're assuming that we can be ignoring any higher powers because we're probably going to be substituting in something very small. Okay, so let's give this a go then. In this example, you can put one expansion into another. So remember the sine expansion up to the power of 4 being the maximum, so we'll go up to the power of 3 here, is going to be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial. Now let's take what we've got here and we can actually split this up using the negative because it will be one expression um, times another expression where we've got minus x3 over 3 factorial. So we're splitting up using those rules of indices. And now we're going to use this um, formula at the top here for the formula for the expansion of e to the x. Okay, so the first one is going to be then um, the original e to the x series expansion up to x cubed. So we'll write it up to the... Um, up to the power of 4 because we can we're going to go up to the power of 4 and then anything greater than 4 will be ignored and then with this one here we've substituted it into this formula up here but actually once we've got to the first non non uh, constant term uh, that will be as high as we need to go so e to the minus x cubed over 6 will be 1 minus x cubed over 6 and that will be the series expansion for this thing here. So we've got the series expansion for e to the x, we've got the series expansion for e to the minus x cubed over 6 and now it's just a case of multiplying these two things together. So let's now expand the brackets with what we've got. So expanding, 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 expanding Expanding, expanding, expanding. And then we don't need to expand the x squared and the x cubed because that will make an x to the 5 term, which we don't want because we're ignoring anything greater than 4. So let's now simplify what we've got here. And this here is the answer because we've got 1, we've got x, we've got x squared over 2. We've got this expression here, which will cancel out with this expression here. So those two will cancel. And then this expression here, add this expression here, will simplify to minus x to the 4 over 8. So there we are. You can do composite functions just like the title of this video uh, describes. You can do e to the sine x by putting in sine x on the top and then expanding it with the e uh, second. So you do the inside function first, then the outside function second.
Okay, so let's now give a question a go. So pause the video and give question four a go from exercise 2D. Okay, so let's now go through the answer. Let's just divide our page up into some sections. So uh, we've got to show that 3x sine 2x minus cos 3x is approximately equal to this thing here under a Maclaurin series expansion. So 3x, and then I'm going to expand sine 2x using Maclaurin series expansion. So that's going to be, uh, it would be usually it would be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, but this time it's sine 2x, so I'll have to replace all of those x's with 2x. So it's going to be 2x minus 2x cubed over 3 factorial, and then it's going to be take away cos 3x. Now usually cos 3x is 1 minus x squared over 2 plus x4 over 4, factorial, but it's cos 3x, so I'm going to have to do um, it as uh, brackets 1 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 3x to the power 4 over 4 factorial, and then work with this, and hopefully it will equal this thing on the right-hand side. So expand the brackets, and we're going to get 6x squared minus... Okay, this is going to be 8x over 3 factorial. I cancel out the 3 from the 3 here, and then if cancel out a 2 from here and here, so that will be then just 4x to the power of 4. Um, let me just do that on the calculator to make sure I've got that right. So it would be 8 divided by 6, and then times by 3. Yeah, that's 4, good. And then minus 1, and then it would be plus for the double negative. That will be 9x squared over 2. And then it will be minus uh, 3 to the power of 4. And then divide that by 4 factorial. Divided by brackets 4 times 3 times 2. That gives us 27 over 8. So 27 over 8 x to the 4. Okay, let's uh, tidy this up now. So we're going to get the minus 1. That's definitely there. And then it's going to be 6x squared plus 9 over 2x squared. That would be 12 over 2. 12 add 9 is 21. So yeah, good. We've got the 21 over 2x squared. And then it's going to be minus. Minus 4 minus 57. So 27 over 8. So I'll do that on the calculator. Minus 4 minus 27 over 8. Minus 59 over 8. So yeah, perfect. Good. Minus 59 over 8 x to the power of 4 plus dot dot dot. Lovely, excellent, good. So I've done part A. Now moving on to part B is going to be the limit of this expression here. So we'll start down here. The limit as x tends towards 0 of 3x plus 1. So this is going to be equal to uh, we'll use the by we use the um, Maclaurin series expansion for this expression here. So it's going to be equal to minus 1 plus 21 over 2x squared minus 59 over 8x to the 4 plus 1 over x squared. Let's now simplify what we've got here. So the plus 1 and the minus 1 will cancel out. And then it's going to be lim x tends towards 0 of, it'll be 21 over 2 minus 59 over 8 x squared. So I'll divide both of these fractions by x squared, and that will leave us with this expression here. Now we'll apply the limit. So now what we've got to think of is what will happen to this expression in the brackets as x moves closer and closer towards 0, or becomes a very small number, or what is the limit as x tends towards 0? And the answer here will just be 21 over 2, because the x squared will get very, very small indeed. So the answer to that part there is 21 over 2. Lovely, so there we are. That's all we're going to go through in the Maclaurin series chapter. So make sure you've had plenty of practice on page 46, exercise 2D. Make sure you definitely have a go at those problem-solving exam-style questions. Uh, and these questions always appear in the uh, further maths exam, so make sure you are nice and prepared for them. Thanks very much for watching.